Okay, here's one all the way from Oregon. This is for Teresa and Dick. I'm talking to myself. Cuckoo clock. Unpack this thing and get her going. Here's the cuckoo clock. Cuckoo bird. Little man. Music box inside. They sent the top, but they didn't send a pendulum. Well, I have to call them and find out if they have a pendulum for it. If they don't, well, then I'll have to order one. Okay. We'll get started with this. Let's see what's going on here. Okay. Regular 25 and okay. got one bad bellow in it. Replace the bellows. So it just needs a general cleaning so far. But Take it apart and see what we got. Okay. Yeah, we'll untangle this and see what we got. The chain's untangled. Now I'm going to take the ends off of the chains. Uh, well, maybe I should put it up on a test stand and see if it does anything first. Okay, I had a pendulum here. I put 250 gram weights on and it is running and it does cuckoo but it uh, needs a little work Okay, so initially what we need is we need to find out do they have weights? Uh, do they have a pendulum? And then we need to repair. It's like somebody's replaced the bellows in here before, so we'll check it out. Replace bellows, take the movement out, clean everything. And a link. Take off the hook. Once you get the hook off, you can pull the chain out. This has epoxy on it because you can see there's a crack right through here, so this hand has been broken. So we'll have to replace that hand. Man. I think I got glue all over 
the side of that thing. Okay. Ooh. Big screw for They're all ripped. Now we we'll have to do a replacement there. leather. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Alright, now we can look in here. And we gotta loosen up. Let's see. See I better get that cuckoo bird out of there first. And the music box. Let's see why. Okay. Now why was that not working? The chain was in there. The wheel's working okay now. This is the piece that holds the fan. Let's trip the music box. Let's 
see him warned. Music box is in good, actually good shape, just needs to clean the oil. Okay. Now I need to take a look at the movement. See if there's anything going on here. Plastic gears. Sometimes there's one of those that'll be cracked. Don't see any cracks on this one. Don't see any cracks on that one. Appears to be in fairly good shape. Okay, we'll take it apart and clean it. Basically, it's we'll give it a thorough cleaning. Overhaul inside the case. This needs thorough cleaning. A lot of dirt and dust there. I don't know what was going on back there. That looks like it was uh, done when it was manufactured because that's above the music box. But I definitely want to clean that up because I don't want those splinters eventually falling into the into the music box. That kind of screw things up. So I don't know what. Was on there, but this needs a cleaning, so we'll do that with the box, and the front of the case, again, just needs cleaned, and we'll probably give it a, after clean all of this up, we'll, uh, yeah, there's some kind of, just driven in dirt or whatever, clean it all up, and then we'll give it a coating of, uh, Here's wait. Here we do have a do a crack here. So we're going to do a repair on that. We'll repair that crack and uh, otherwise everything seems to be in pretty good shape. Yeah, I got the face off so that I can repair that properly. Let's do that one more. One more uh, nail to get out. Okay, get that started. is a relatively, relatively new, I mean, comparatively new regula because the, I hate this, this uh, star wheel is pressed on. And the older ones, it's drilled and tapped on the side with a screw. I will do that because you've got to force this off and you can't do it with plates together because if you try to get under here to try to force this off when you're dismantling this movement you end up bending the star wheel. So what you do is you get this apart and then put the plate with support behind it and you can drive that pin and that uh, arbor out of there. We're going to take this part, like we typically do any. I need another container. What we do is we'll start out with uh, start out with the hammer. Turn it. There's a little notch in the end. Comes right out. Same with the lifts for the bellows. Turn them. Slide them out. Okay, that takes those out. That's going to have to be left on. Um, this lever has got to come out. That's held on with a uh, E-clip. 
Ooh, there's a spring in here. You got There's an E-clip that holds that spring on. So that's that E-clip has to be taken off. That E-clip has to be taken off. And then this lever can be taken out. So let's get those going and get that out of there. So we'll take this E-clip out. That's a tiny one. Well, it's a tight one. Yeah, that should be. Should be. Well, there we go. Leave that. Then we've got to take this E clip off. I gotta put my visor down so I can see it. Maybe. There we go. Okay. That one out. Now that should come out. Oh no, that's attached to this one. A little dirty. Whoop, that one flew. Well, I got plenty of them, so we'll replace it. Okay, there's that one that allows now the rest of this stuff to come off. Now I gotta get the E clip off of the rack. Pretty much got it apart except for the we've got the uh, gathering pallet to get off, and sometimes that's easy to get off, sometimes it's not. You've got to apply equal force on both sides, and you can pop it off. Okay, so we get that off. Again, our mind messing with Google's when you put these back together. This little flag has to go behind that pen, or your door won't open and shut. Okay, so now we need to take. Let's see if I got a. Before we put this back, we're going to get this off of here. Before we put it back on, I'm going to drill a hole in the side of that and tap it and put a screw in it so it can be more easily removed for the next repairman. Let's we'll see if we can't get this out of here. We got a crow's foot in this little vise. Let's see if I can drive that out. That's 
really tight. I don't think that's going to come loose. Okay, I got it off. I had to... There's a flame and heat that. And take this over and put that end in a big vise. Grab a hold of this and twist it until it came off. So we'll broach that hole out so that it slips onto this thing very easily. And then we will also drill a hole in it, tap it, and put a screw in it. Okay, here's the kind of thing that needs to be cleaned. This is uh, this is dried oil. So that's what we gotta get all clean. Okay, I did an initial cleaning. Just a quick dip in the ultrasonic and put the gears back in. So I can now take a look and see what we've got. We're going to want to have this thing fixed and so it runs for a very long, long time. Look, the second wheel is usually one that It's mangled pretty good. Let's see how the second wheel is on the time side. Yeah, it's not worn much at all, but it is still moving. So I'm going to go ahead. Just got to go back out to Oregon. Ooh, that's the man. Okay, so the worn side. Is this side. Okay, now let's look at the escape gear. Yeah, yeah we should maybe look at that. Let's look at the other side. The main gear. the second wheel on the other side. Yeah. Okay. So we're here. And let's look at the escape. Oh yeah, that's really badly worn. Yeah. See that that's that's a lot of play there, so that needs to be redone. The other side looked okay. Alright, now let's look at the strike side. The strike side on the front. And the main wheel looks okay. And here's where the gathering pallet attaches. You see which way we rotate here. Okay, so it runs this way. Yeah. Okay, so here's the one side here. Okay. And now let's look at the next gear. Backside now. See if there's any back here that need to be done. Main one. That's fine. Second wheel. Yeah, I don't like that. I want that to be done. 
and then the third wheel. Let's take a look at that one. No, that's well within limits. That one too. Okay, those are the ones we need to replace. Let's look at the center. Just see what's going on there. We're fine on the front of the movement. We've got uh, T2, T3, which is the escape we're going to do. And we also have the chime side, the strike side, strike side number two. And on the back, we've got the strike side number two and the time side number two and three. So we've got T2 front and back, T3 front and back, S2 front and back with six bushings. So I measured the pivots on these. They're both the time side ones are the pivots are one millimeter. The, all four of these are one millimeter. And the strike side on the back side back plate that pivot is uh, 1.18. So I'll use a one millimeter there and broach it out. Uh, the front side of strike number two is 1.74. That's the arbor that the uh, gathering pallet goes on. And that was 1.74, so I will use a 175 on it. It's driven and it'll have to be just barely broached. This uh, this one here will have to be broached out 1800 1800ths of a millimeter. But the neat part is that this particular bushing has an OD of uh, three and a half millimeters. Three and a half. So we use the three and a three point or the yeah, three point uh, uh, three point four seven reamer on that one, but all of these other five holes will use a three uh, 2.97 reamer. Uh, so we'll go ream those out now. Okay, I forgot to turn the camera on. So I only got one more to drill. That's this one. This is pretty touchy. That's it. Okay. So we've got the holes drilled and we're going to put the bushings in. And we'll be putting them in from the outside in. Since these holes are drilled parallel, sides are parallel, I'm going to put them in from the outside so that they are flat with the inside. So I'm just going to chamfer the holes a little bit makes it easier to start takes any burrs off okay and now I like this plate these are the small bushings that are going in And we will be hammering those 
goes in. So we will take these and put these in here like so. started those three <clears throat> and then we'll take a let's, let's get around with one let's see how far we gotta go with them well, they're pretty far in there it's gonna have to grind off the tops now get these in alright wait let's move the camera Use the punch, rounded punch, put on each one. And we just, this expands them just a little bit, gets them in nice and flat and tight. Nice and flat on the back. And then we'll have to grind these off and then broach them out for the individual, uh, individual uh, gears. Pivots. Okay, good. Cutting brooch. We've got to now fit each one of these pivots to the hole. We're almost there. Let's go on the other side. Now this is going to take a little broaching on this one.
just a tad on a tight side. There we go. And we'll finish broach that one. Right now we've got to go to the front side and do the same thing there. Okay. There's that that one. So that one's done. There's that one. There's that one. And on the back, got that one. And that one. And that one. Oh, nice, nice end shake. Okay, all done. Okay, here's the so-called star wheel. The spokes are what lift the levers that make it clock cuckoo. <coughs> Up until about 1976, this used to fit on the main wheel on the outs. This one is on the outside of the plate. Just just push on. It had a screw on it that you would tighten up. That way you could adjust it too after you got everything put back together. Now this is a press fit, so if you force this on, my well, yeah. That's all there is that holds it. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to broach this hole out so that this will slide right on there very easily. And I'm going to drill a hole in the side here in this, in this collar and drill a hole all the way through the inside. Tap it put a screw in it, make this like it used to be made before 1976. It makes it much easier to get off when you're taking the movement apart. So the next guy that sometime in the future that goes to redo this, if it ever does get redone, it'll come off a lot easier and it also makes it uh, easier to adjust the, the uh, thing. So that's what I'm going to do. Alright, so right now this barely goes on, starts on, and then it would have to be driven on. And uh, not good. So, take a cutting brooch and we will open that hole a little bit. And we'll just take it a little bit at a time. starting to go on. That hole in there is crooked anyway. Okay. There we go. All the further on it has to be goes on just till the end of the arbor comes out. There it is. Now it comes on and off very easily. All I gotta do to make sure we tighten that, we're gonna drill a hole in the side of that thing. And then we will tap it. Okay. I drilled a hole with a number 50 drill. And now I'm going to Tap this. With a... <clears throat> 264 thread. 
Okay, tapped. Now there's a 264 screw in there. That sets it. Well, now instead of being a friction fit, the fella can undo the screw. Just pull that right off. Okay. First thing we have to do in putting this back together is put in the lever that holds the door open. When the door opens, this little flag is pushed back. Okay. Um, and this little guy, this pin has to be on the outside of the flag when you put it back because this gets lifted and that pushes that flag in. If you look up here there's the door perch going out. You know what opens this? Are these little tabs. That little tab is going to rotate. That's going to rotate this way. It's going to lift up on this. And that's going to push that flag in. And then what keeps the door open is this lever. Which goes in here. Anyway, this drops down and catches that pin that's on here. This pin is caught by that hook. And that's what keeps the door open. And so it goes like that. Now what makes the door shut is at the end of the cuckooing, a lever on the outside will hit this, lift that hook, and the door can slam shut. So when you're putting this back together, this flag has to be on the inside of this pin. Well, before we put that stuff in there, we've got to put a C clip on there. This is really awkward working with this camera in front of me, so bear with me. Let me get that one in there. Yeah, it looks good. Okay. Got a clip on it. No, that's not going to come off, see? Okay, now we can go from there. All right. Now we can wait. Put this one in just before we shut the. Just before we shut the uh, uh, plates, because it can drive you crazy trying to get it keeps falling out. All right. So then we got the main wheel. Now, you know this goes in this way because the star wheel is going to go on there on the outside. So this one goes in here. Next wheel is this one. And we want to set that. 
So those tabs are approximately 9.30, 10 o'clock. So the wheel that holds the gathering pallet. And the next wheel is the warning wheel. That has the pin on it. And that pin you want to put toward the top of the movement. So, then the last thing that goes in there, of course, is the flag or the uh, governor. Like so. On the run side, so you really got main wheel second wheel with the arbor that goes through that holds the gathering pallet and the little flags that open the door and uh, the warning wheel with the warning pin above and the governor. On the run side this gear is going to run, this plastic gear is going to run the center wheel which is part of the motion works and that goes right there and these kind of don't matter and you got uh, second wheel it's got to go in this way and then the third wheel is the uh, escape gear and that goes right here So basically, you've got just three gears on the time side, and you got four on the strike side or cuckoo side. Uh, main wheel, second wheel that has the gathering pallet on the front. Um, this main wheel, you know, has a arbor that that sticks through the star wheel is going to go on. And that's all you really have to put in here right now. I mean, we can put the So, except for this, we got to stick this in between now. And uh, we'll mess with that after we get this started. I'm going to get the plates on now. This sticks high, and this is next high, so we want to make sure we get that started through the hole. Start lining up, get that one started through the hole. And you start putting on some screws or some nuts. The only thing we have to remember now is to get a little door opener in there. And it's going to go in like so. This pin is down so that it can be caught by that hook. You make sure the flag is in. And this has got to go above the second wheel so those little paddles can catch a hold of it and lift it. Let me make sure those are... <laughs> looks pretty good. Okay, so we're going to put that in here. Well, it's really hard for me. I need to get this going here. Okay. And then we've got to close these up, and I'm going to have to shut this off and get it out of the way so I can manipulate the pivots into the hole. Okay, we've got those in there now. And I'm going to tighten those. Leave these two somewhat loose because now we want to get the uh, 
fill it in. Let me recheck it quickly. Okay, so I don't know. We got to get the crotch in. I'll go through here. Okay. Okay. Before we start putting <coughs> levers on the front, we need to oil this thing now. So that's what we'll do next. And what I do is I use the oilers. I dip them in here and get a tiny drop of oil. Put it on each pivot. You don't you don't oil any <coughs> lever pivots, just the wheel pivots and a little drop on the pallet of the anchor. Okay, now we're ready to put levers on. As far as the age of this clock, I, I before I put things on, I want to point out a few things. On the back of the clock, you notice that it's a 25 and then a dash and a B. 25 is the model number of this particular regular movement. And the B is a date code starting in 1970. They started, the letter used the letter A to indicate the year 1970, the letter B for 71, C for 72, and so forth. They repeated those letters each 20 years, so a could be 1970, it could be 1990, it could be 2010, it could be 2030. A B could be 71, or 91, or 2011. Uh, <clears throat> the owner knows it's not 2011 because they didn't acquire the the clock until 2001. Uh, the uh, so is it? Uh, does the B stand for 91 or 71? Well, the owner remembers the clock being in grandmother's possession in the 1950s. Well problem is they didn't start dating it until the 1970s. So I suspect if Grandma owned the clock in the 1950s, by the 1970s, if I had it for 20 years, it probably wasn't working anymore. Took it to a supposed repairman and uh, the general uh, way of doing things was don't bother to repair the movement, just replace it. So I suspect that it could have been replaced in 1971 
or it could have been replaced in 1991. Now was it 71? They say no because it wasn't until 1976, before 1976, this gear was put on as this is with a fit, uh, a simple fit and then tighten the set screw. Well, this one, when I received it, had a pressed on gear. That was done starting in 1976. Uh, and I have since taken this, as you saw before, drilled the hole in it, tapped it, and put a screw in it so it can be easily removed. So eliminating this B from 1971 means that this, re this was probably put in in 1991. Um, and that would have given 40 years of 30 to 40 years of wear on the other movement and they probably just replaced it. Another indication is that this particular lever had, this is uh, one where you could, this sticks outside the edge of the, of the uh, plates and you could push on this and manually trip the cuckoo mechanism. You see a little circle here. Now in a movement that would have, as this one does, has a music box, it would have had a lever here to trip the music box, but that would have been built in to this lever. Instead, you can see clearly here that this was altered and uh, soldered. You would never see soldering coming out of the factory. But that solder was to modify this lever so it would again work with the music box. That's another indication that this is not the original movement, that this is a replacement and was modified to make it work with the music box. So my guess is that yeah, the clock itself may be from the 1950s, but the movement was probably replaced in the ninth, around 1991. All right, so to make that a little less obvious. I went ahead and cleaned up the cleaned up the solder on it and uh, put a little chemical bluing on it just to make it look a little less nasty. As I put these levers on, try to explain how each part works here, but people can troubleshoot their clocks. Starting out center shaft, you see there is two cams. This one is for the half hour this one, the larger one, is for the hour. That's what starts everything. And this is the lift lever and also the lever that catches the pin at warning on the warning wheel. And then this additional lever is for the music box. So let's put that in so you can see how this works. Stick that in there and see this part drops in behind the plate. Where am I? Oh, right here. This part drops behind the plate and that lever in there is what catches the warning wheel or warning pin when it rotates from here. To here. All right. So we're going to. Oh, and then this is the lever then that rides the pin. There's half hour. 
there's our. So we set it to where it's just tripped the hour. So that we can set our rack and snail and everything properly. So that's got to go in. And uh, then this one's got to go in. And this one goes in here. And this one has on it This extension here is what drops down, kicks this, and pulls the hook, pulls this hook off this pin to allow the door to shut. This is the extension on that lever that stops the uh, warning pin. So you can see the pin going up against that lever. Okay. So when this lever lifts with this pin, lifts this lever, releases the warning pin, which rotates around to this piece that stops the warning pin. And then when this drops off of the hour cam, releases the warning pin and the, the clock cuckoos. So we got to put those two levers in now. This is a modified movement. You can see right now, there's a cut here for a... There is a cut here for a C-clamp. There's a C-clip and one right here for a C-clip. Why couldn't we just have a C-clip right up against here or right up against here to keep that lever from coming out? Well, because this lever has been modified to run the music box, but originally what it was, that lever had what was called a night shutoff on this movement and what would happen in a night shutoff is it would be a lever back here that would push on this push this lever out disconnecting it from the cams on this uh, minute uh, shaft and that would keep it from cuckooing at night and as a result you know to shut the thing back on turn the thing back on like a cuckoo, you release that lever, the put thing that pushes this in, well then there has to be a way for this to spring back. And so this has a spring that has to go in here. Now that normally wouldn't have any function at all now because the shutoff, the night shutoff, isn't part of this, this movement at all. But we have to put the spring on so that uh, we can keep this lever from flopping around. So I'll do that now. I can't do that with the camera in my hand. With the spring, with the first clip in, and we now have to put a clip on the outside there so that, uh, I don't know, that really should hold it in place, but we need to put that other clip on. Okay, and now we put the other lever in. This is one that's got the stops on it. Like so, it's uh, got the detente that pushes the tab down that will release the hook to let the door close after it's done cuckooing. It's got the tab on it that stops the cuckoo by going against the warning pin. And it also has a tab that sticks out here that falls under the rack uh, and holds the teeth of the rack as it's counting off the cuckoos. So we got to put a clip on it to keep it in and it's on the inside of 
see if I can point it out. Goes on the inside. Come on, baby. I got it stuck now. Okay, there we go. It goes right here. There we go. It goes right here. Right there. So I'll put that one on. Okay, there's the clip installed. So we got two levers in. Okay, now this is where we put on the uh, gathering pallet. We want the hour lever past the point where this is tripped and fallen off. We want the warning pin against the stop detente. And then here is where the gathering pallet goes and here's the rider for the gathering pallet. And uh, we want to make sure this then goes in the notch on the gathering pallet. So I'll put that on and then we'll look at it. Okay, the warning pin is against the detente. Everything is all set. My little hammer. The rider is in the notch of the gathering pallet and I'm going to take a punch with a hole in the end that will fit over the end of the arbor and I'm just going to give that a light tap and that's all it should take to have that gathering pallet in place. Now if I release this I lift this, put some pressure on the on the chain wheel, lift this. We should now get that to run one rotation and shut off. Okay. Notice that when we do that, the door opens and then shuts again at the end of the cycle. Now the only thing we need now to control the number of strikes is to put the rack and snail on. And what we'll do is we'll put on the intermediate wheel. Like so. And the snail is going to go on there. And what we're going to want to do is make sure and the rack then goes on this other one. And we're going to get the rack behind the snail. Like so. And we got to now trip this and see where the rack tail is falling on a step of the snail. And it's important that we get this rack tail in the middle of a step because uh, if it's not we get it where it's very at the very beginning of a step the next hour it might catch on the downslope and you'll end up at say three o'clock having it strike two so you need to have that rack tail fall in the middle All right now once those are in place now we can test it now to see if it works. I'll run the things. You see the rack being lifted by the gathering pallet. This detente is catching each tooth. And when this falls underneath, then it will allow this to fall far enough to catch the, the warning pin and stop the strike. So we go. All right, one more now to go and it should shut off. And there we are. Now it works. And you see where that rack tail is now. Let's release it again. See where it falls? And now it should. And this is the, let's see, we're on the one, two, three.
three, four, five, six, seven. Should strike seven times. See if uh, you hear that going seven times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's working right. Now all I gotta do is we'll put a washer on here. That keeps this from disengaging from the the uh, center. And we gotta put a clip here and a clip here, and we're all set up. Everything is where it's supposed to be. Okay, there it is. There is the lock position. And the easiest way for me to describe how this should be put on is look at these look at any two uh, spokes or lifts. They should be should be placed on the pin on the arbor. See if I can see here. Lights are in the way. That's in the way. Okay. I'm going to put this on here so that if you form a line with two of the spokes like that, it should be parallel with the side of the plate. If it's like that, you're going to have problems with the cuckooing. Like that, like that, you know, anything but put these two, put two of them parallel when everything is tight. That should be like that. And now I'm going to lock that down. I'm going to push this on. So it's just, just there. And then I'm going to tighten them down. Yeah, now it's tightened down. When I run this, it might be a tiny bit off. Let's see how it goes. I'm going to trip this. And I'm going to let it run. And it should end up just like that if we put our... Yeah, it's a tiny bit off. Okay, there it is. Okay. So, see, I can adjust this by taking that off. All right. Those two things look fairly parallel to me. Tighten that. Now that's not going to slip. And let's run this again. And see what happens. Should end up with those parallel at the end. If you do that now, the lift should work just fine. Okay, so we're all set to put these back in, and uh, we can then test run it. Okay. These are two different sizes. One is longer than the other. The longer one goes on the bottom. So, rotates around, then the short one goes in. That little pin has got to go through that slot. Line it up, flip it over, and then the hammer goes in. And go 
this round. Then I gotta grab a hold of this spring, pull around and put it into that little hook, and I can't do that with the camera boy. Okay, now final test to make sure that that is adjusted correctly. We want to make sure that that short drop falls off when it comes to a stop. There we go. Coo, 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 coo. Perfect. Alright, we got to start doing some case repairs. This was broken through right here. And uh, I've glued it with epoxy glue. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to mark this here. What I want to do is put make two grooves here and here. Cut two grooves, put a metal piece in, and epoxy them in there to strengthen that crack so it can't split open again. Wise on the top, there was a crack here, very difficult to see. If I can, it's uh, working across this way. It hasn't broken through, but I'm going to reinforce that. There's an actual break here that's been re-glued. And I'm going to put two reinforcements in there as well. On the front of this piece, I'm going to have to do some uh, touch-up to hide that break. And as well, on the front here, uh, where that crack is, we're going to have to do some filling and uh, recoloring so that you can't see where that crack is. And we're going to clean on the inside of this. Remove whatever that caused that uh, pieces of wood to be splintered up there. And then we're going to coat the inside of this with a 50-50 mixture of linseed oil and, and uh, mineral spirits to uh, feed the wood and eliminate any odor and uh, dusting. Okay, to reinforce these crack glued cracks, I've gouged out with a carving thing a depression so they can be buried in. And we're making some wire staples that can be put in. And to make those wire staples, I'm simply taking some heavy piano wire. Bending the wire. And I'll take about that much. And we'll bend again. And then I'll cut this off with. Drill some holes, put the little legs in, okay, and then these will be epoxied in, and that should hold those cracks together, but so won't break again. All right, I've got some good detergent here, lab detergent called Alkanox in water. Something was spilled on this and kind of ruined it. I got some very fine steel wool and Alkanox. I'm going to gently, very gently clean get this Whatever this was that somebody spilled on here. I 
going to try to restore this finish. There we go. Alkanox is working on that. Looking much better. And we can maybe wax it later. See, there's a circular stain on it. Getting that stain off of there. feel the finish getting smooth right here yeah, there's stain in here Before. Yeah. Yeah, so I'll just undo it back to it. You're good. Yeah. We ordered those, what, for May? I they don't have a date yet. I have no idea what I'll do. Some of them were, and then all I got to do is call it. Yeah. Should be on the second. I'll tell them the number and everything. Okay, we got that filled with epoxy putty. Good and strong. Do is sand it nice and smooth. There's the back. And then here's the front. There's the front of the clock. That's the way it's going to look when it's all put back together. And we're ready to go. Okay, this is the uh, chain wheel that goes on the music box. It's made out of real cheap plastic. And uh, I noticed that the chain has a hard time staying on this wheel. And this is very flimsy. So I thought, well, here's the click goes this way. And then this little thing here is what pushes the little man out the door during the cuckoo. So I thought, well, how about if we replace that with a metal? chain wheel. So I had uh, one around here, I took it apart, and I'm going to cut off this wheel. So I just have the click and put the click here. I can take this off, trace it onto some sheet brass, cut it out, replace this, and uh, make a shaft go through all the pieces that'll fit on then to the end of the music box. And it'll be replaced with metal instead of that crummy plastic. And I had some cuckoo bellows. I put uh, new tops on, move the pieces onto them that need to go in, glued some paper to them, and uh, those will be the new cuckoo bellows that go into it. Much better than those others that were kind of junky. I'll put those in. 
In the meantime, I think I'll go ahead and put the movement back in the case so I can test run it, make sure everything's working right that way while I work on that music box thing. And we'll just run these chains around. in and then see about run on it. Okay, I have a nice old piece of sheet brass and it's uh, thinner than the plastic but much stronger so we're going to use this to make this piece and uh, pop this off. Anyway, what we can do is we'll just put this on here. We'll trace that. And we'll cut out the brass. And we will see what we end up with. Start out by putting some dicum. It's a layout die onto the uh, brass. And let it dry. And then we can put this on here and trace it with a scribe. Took a piece of brass rod and I drill, measured the diameter of this and I drilled a hole in here so that this will just fit over there and that's uh, yeah what we got to do is got to drill a hole in here so that this fits just barely on the end and I'll turn a little bit on here and then we'll paint it on there. Okay, here's our replacement metal instead of plastic. So it works. So we're going to be pulling this like so, setting it, and then. Looks good to me. We had the cuckoo clock running just with the cuckoo mechanism of this without the music box. See if it's gonna run. It runs just fine. Let's cuckoo. Whoop. Okay. Took the bellows back out to be able to get the uh, music box in. Got the bird back on. Okay, now we're going to put the, put the music box in. It goes in this way, upside down. Now, it's going to be a little tricky getting the wires hooked back up, so I'll turn the camera off. As I put these hooks and things back on, I'm putting an extra loop in with a length of chain so that when you wind these up, this goes against the bottom of the case and it'll still make it a lot easier to get the weights on and off. And finally, the owner complains that the top doesn't want to stay on. She goes to dust this. This falls off. All right, so the way it's supposed to go on, one screw goes into a little latch here. 
folds down and just pushes in there. And it is loose. So I think what I'll do, the only thing, this one can't lift out on this side because it's at an angle. This one can pull right out and then it can fall off. But what if we put this back on and we cut a little slot in here and then put a tab here screwed down that rotates can be pushed in there and locks that in so this can't pull up until this is flipped this way. So I think that's what I'll do. And cut a slot. Put two little pieces of flat brass. And now I've got to let the epoxy dry. Uh, and then we'll make a little tab to slide into that slot. Okay. For Teresa. What you do when you put the top on. You were complaining that, or saying that this top was constantly, every, if you go to do, dust it, that this top would come off. And the reason for that, there's two different little tabs here. One on this side goes in first, and this drops down, goes into that tab. All you got to do is bump this, and the thing is coming off. So I made a little slot and a little tab. Once you put that on, push that little tab into that notch and that will keep this from rotating out of here and it will be less likely to fall off. Okay, so then to take the top back off, you just push this tab back out, lift this up and the whole thing comes off. So there we go. Like that and like that and it's held in much, much tighter in place. And when you set it up, put it on a good uh, screw, and then, I know you didn't send your pendulum, but I got a pendulum here that'll work. Put your pendulum on first, and then hang the weights. And of course, you have your own weights. These are the weights that go pretty much with this clock. It's, give your pendulum a push. Listen to the tick, make sure it's even. And you can move your clock on the wall too. Move it a little bit, should be working. I set it to level here at my place. So here's what it sounds like. sending this back very soon get it packed up ship it back to you